Hello, welcome to the Safari webinar. My name is Ian Dalton and I'm the Executive Director of the Safari Foundation. The Foundation is a non-profit organization dedicated to developing and sustaining open source software and support education with a particular focus on learning, teaching and research. We don't do that alone. We have active partnerships with the Consortium in France to support Thai, and the Land Consortium in North America. So we bring together around 170 mainly higher education institutions and commercial partners in a global innovation network. Aperi has around 18 software communities producing a range of software solutions for education. Today's webinar is actually not about one of those software communities, but presented by Alan Dyke and the lead for one of them, Helms LM. This afternoon, Brian is going to introduce us to Access and the approach to bring work content. Over to you, Brian. Thanks, Ian. Can everybody hear me okay? Get my microphone set up here. Cool. Thank you, Eric. Okay. All right. We're good to go. So thank you for uh, attending today. This is... Uh, I talk about Hacks the Web and uh, Hacks and Hacks CMS and all things Hacks. Uh, my name is Brian Olendike. As Ian mentioned, I work at Penn State uh, on a project called Elms Learning Network, which doesn't have the word hacks in it. And uh, I work at the College of Arts and Architecture's Office of Digital Learning, building solutions to deliver online courses um, using you know new, new fun things. Um, so, uh, this is going to be Haxing the webinar here. Uh, so if you want to tweet me, I'm at BTO Pro. Uh, I don't stop talking about hacks lately, and this is a consolidation of that. So I did mention that Elms LN word. You might say, uh, isn't that the project you actually work on? Um, I've been really involved in the Drupal community for uh, something like 13 years. <laughs> and so starting to branch off and talk about things that aren't Drupal is a little odd uh, at first, but um, really Elms LN is kind of this umbrella term. Yes, it is a platform. It's a uh, next generation digital learning environment, but as part of NGDLE, uh, which is a more holistic way of looking at the way we craft solutions and kind of the network of connections between them in the education space, um, Hacks really fits in pretty well. Uh, so Hacks is, been originally developed as the authoring experience for Elms Learning Network um, to bring it beyond the days of CK Editor WYSIWYG technology. And so moving it into its own thing uh, just kind of made sense. So we still work on Elms. This is still part of Elms Learning Network. Just wanted to clear that up ahead of time. So today, we're going to be talking about uh, the technology surrounding Hack CMS and hacks and what the heck is it and why won't you stop talking about it, Brian? So first of all, we're going to start at WC Factory, um, which is some tooling things you can check out. Um, LRN Web Components. We're going to get in deep on Hacks Editor. This is where the bulk of the time uh, is going to be spent. And then the other half or so of the time is going to be on Hack CMS. Uh, Hacksium, I mention here uh, just because it's a funny word to say. Um, but uh, I'm not going to be talking about it today, but I'm going to eventually be taking Hack CMS into a uh, multi-user management type of a space. So let's start at the, the factory floor, so to speak. What is WC Factory? Uh, so WC Factory is a series of tools for managing web components at scale. Why you should care is web components, we'll talk about in a little bit, are the future of pretty much the web in general. Um, and so hacks and hack CMS and everything we do going forward will be built on top of web components. So at the moment, we have about 185 uh, individual web component projects, some of which have 10 to 20 web components of their own inside. So we're pushing probably in the neighborhood of 250 uh, custom web components. You need tooling in order to manage that. So we've abstracted that tooling and, and put it out there. So we're not going to talk about WC Factory today, but it's uh, it's definitely worth checking out if you're interested in what we're doing here. Uh, so the next thing is what is LRN Web Components? This is something else that's surrounded Hacks and Elms recently. 
Um, it's just kind of this umbrella term that we use for all the components I just mentioned. So if WC Factory is our tooling that allows us to create new web components, LRN Web Components is this umbrella organization um, that we lump everything into on NPM. Uh, so our, our public listing is, as of this screenshot, 166 elements we actually have published on webcomponents.org. Uh, but they're all managed in a mono repo, uh, which is just one big repo that has all of them listed in it. And LRN Web Components uh, was actually generated using our tooling. So if you want to see an advanced example of where you can go with our tooling, LRN Web Components would be the place to go. Um, all these things you can find off of github.com slash elmsln. That's where all our public repos are. OK, so to the real, the real meat and potatoes, what is hacks? Um, so hacks is short for headless authoring experience. Yes, I know the X is not at the front of the word experience. Um, it's an umbrella word for all things hacks now, because hacks is getting pretty big as a project and the things underneath it. Um, so most of the time we refer to hacks and the editing capabilities of what it is as hacks editor. Um, so the hacks editor is a platform agnostic uh, WYSIWYG, if you want to call it, um, of the next generation. So you can check out a live demo of it and documentation on it at hackstheweb.org, which we're going to step through some screenshots and things now. So let's see what is hacks. Let's watch a short video here. Put in, make sure YouTube sharing works. Oh, so Dave says there's no audio. So um, was anyone able to hear the audio on this video before I switch to just speaking over it? Okay, I'll I'll post a link, Dave, to the to the video. Sorry, <laughs> I'll keep playing it now. which I don't mention there in the video, it's public, but uh, if you do like our elements, our elements are all publicly available. Um, they're all wired for hacks. They work with or without hacks, uh, and you can find them on webcomponents.org.
So let's look at what some of that is in the documentation as to what's going on in that editor. So stop sharing that video, continue on here. So what is Hacks? Hacks is this, it's a single tag on the interface. It's an H hyphen A hyphen X tag. Now, yes, it's a lot more uh, custom elements than that, um, but it boils up to a single tag to implement. And what it is, is it injects the editing interface that you see here. So this uh, aspect of the UI will fly in, you'll have editing tool sets, and then you'll be able to select anything in the defined content area of the page uh, to be editable. So if you're used to you know, like a Drupal or WordPress CMS context, a Sakai LMS context, whatever it is, think of it as being able to replace that uh, body blob editor, right? So this is just a static HTML block, but when we start putting in web components that are highly semantic, it doesn't appear to be um, so primitive, right? We have this meme tag, for example. Then if I were to edit the meme tag, and it's a, a common UI pattern that we, we leverage, um, is that I take that tag and I kind of start to work on it in this preview pane. So I'm, I've selected, in this case, uh, this silly meme with the sunglasses coming off, and then I'm working in this uh, two pane split here. So this is the preview of my changes. And over here is the input fields. Um, so this is actually touching uh, the DOM and manipulating the properties in real time. So it's not you know, a traditional WYSIWYG. It's you know, what you see you're actually getting. Like it's you're seeing exactly what it's gonna look like right then. Um, because what we're doing is basically turning uh, all your design assets into an API of sorts. Uh, when I searched NASA, we're more or less just extending that into well, where data comes from. Uh, so you can define remote places to get data from. In the hackstheweb.org uh, example site, you see YouTube, for example. So I can search YouTube using their API key. Uh, you know, there is some setup involved. <laughs> I don't wanna say it's completely magic. And then search YouTube in context and select a video. In this case, the uh, Hacks the Web edit and publishing video. Then because I've got these two APIs here, uh, basically, so I've selected a video coming off of an API, a, a rich data-driven API like YouTube that gives me access to you know, what the video uh, length is, uh, what the title is, descriptive material, um, and what that link is, right? And so then on the other side, if you wanna think of it in your site, um, the elements that have been wired up to hacks go, oh, well, hey, someone said that they are, they're about to send me a video. Does anybody have the ability to render video? And in this case, two tags have you know, metaphorically held their hands up. And so video player is the one that I'm gonna select here, which then would put those fields together. So uh, we've got a lot of different integrations already. Um, so hack CMS being the obvious one, it's it's our own uh, content management system we've been working on that's very flat, and we'll talk about it more later. Um, but we've also gotten integrations for Backdrop, uh, the last three versions of Drupal, mostly just to illustrate uh, how easy it is to write the backend code. We don't use the Drupal 6 integration. Um, and, and this should also say Elms LN. Elms LN is built on top of Drupal 7 at the moment, so it also works there. Uh, Grav CMS and WordPress. That's usually a big deal for people in the open publishing space. Um, we've also experimented with uh, doing this on a desktop, which really isn't that difficult. Um, we just kind of probably need to focus for about two weeks and we could pull it off um, because all you're doing is, uh, if you're using something like Electron, uh, you're just putting web code, which Electron um, is a desktop publishing wrapper uh, that you can write HTML JavaScript for, well, we could write um, web components and throw them in there and get all of that rich functionality, but for the desktop. And most importantly, any Aperio project or anyone could adopt any part of this. Um, all aspects of hacks are um, Apache 2 licensing, which should be pretty uh, friendly to, you know, re-ingesting into other solutions and things within the Aperio community. So what does it look like to actually integrate it? Because um, we are a fairly small team. We have uh, four people that 
it would say that they work on hacks at different levels or web components in general um, associated with Elm's learning network. But so the integrations are pretty simple because so much of the complexity is on the front end. So because of the, the wonders of ES6 and modern browser technology, um, we can use script type module and just reference modular JavaScript bits and they'll figure out how to reassemble themselves. Uh, so this is what I was talking about. You have a single tag, in this case, the HAX tag. And referencing that tag, it's going to pull together all the references in there, and it's going to more or less attach them to the head of the document uh, to, to present them all. So um, especially using like HTTP2 and uh, push-based server technology, we actually don't bundle uh, our assets the way you traditionally would with like a web pack. Now, you could bundle those things and ship them. Um, but we like to keep them in their pieces because they, they actually deliver in about the same amount of time um, just because of uh, modern web browsers and, and you know, pseudo streaming technology of HTTP2. Uh, so anything that goes inside of the content area, the inner tag of hacks becomes editable by hacks if it understands what it is. So you can't, um, you know, you can't, edit like a script tag, it's going to sanitize that out, obviously. Um, the other parts of uh, any integration is it needs a place to load content from, obviously, to get that in there. It needs a place to save content, right? So that when I hit the Save button, it's a AJAX off of a, a data endpoint. And it needs uh, a place to load the App Store specification, which we won't get into, um, but it basically gives hacks its directions as to how to set it up um, that's where all those elements come from in in uh, in the the flyouts and things. Um, you can read more about that in the in the documentation site. Um, and then optionally, although you're going to definitely want one, a place to be able to upload files, uh, right? So that I can drag and drop files and have them upload successfully. So what that then looks like if we inspect the DOM uh, on that web page before, as you see, I've got this uh, paragraph tag that I've highlighted here. And you see we have our HAX tag. You see it points to an endpoint to get the App Store specification, which is just a JSON blob. And then from inside of there, uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is in Web Components land, you get these shadow roots. Um, and so helps with containing CSS, JavaScript functionality, things like that. Uh, so then you'll see there's a one-to-one -one relationship between these tags here in the DOM and being able to select them and know what to edit. So that's more or less what's going on after you've integrated hacks and your users are, are manipulating that uh, body area within uh, inside the uh, HAX tag. So more about web components, uh, you can learn on webcomponents.org. Um, uh, web components are now natively supported in Chrome, Opera, Safari, and Firefox as of uh, about October of 2018. Um, the recent Edge announcement, which Edge also, you, you can hit IE11 with these. Um, the recent Edge announcement about it moving to uh, Chromium under the hood is uh, a pretty big deal for web components because it means that this custom elements and shadow DOM um, developing aspect that it currently says is going to shift to stable by the end of the year. Um, while not confirmed, there's also a lot of talk that once um, January 2020 hits, uh, Windows 7 is end of life, no longer supported by Microsoft, and is the last operating system that has uh, IE 11 as its highest browser. So there's a lot of thinking that once we hit January 2020, you're really not even going to have to think about that dreaded IE 11 anymore which is a big deal for <laughs> modern web development for sure, uh, and whether or not you need to compile and things like that. So how does Hacks work with web components? I've said you, you make web components, which are these brand new HTML tags you have access to. Um, so unlike, uh, for example, like Gutenberg, which is another uh, you know, next-gen WYSIWYG editor in the WordPress community, um, our components just tell you to create your design assets. Um, in Gutenberg, you actually craft these things called Guten blocks, which are um, or React based. I'm not going to 
get into the technical details of that or my dislike of React personally. But um, with our approach, we just add on a little bit of JSON, uh, JSON schema abstraction, more or less, is what this is, so that we're telling uh, hacks, if it's there, how to uh, interface with this web component. So if you imagine you, you just make your component and you design it and I've got like a picture and it's got a text area that I'm making that for the web. That will work on any website anywhere. And then I'm more or less imbuing that with a little bit of JSON. And that JSON is going to illustrate to hacks, hey, this is how you edit that text area and this is how you edit that image, which is a fundamentally different way of attacking this problem, right? So uh, elements and, and content that's created with hacks no longer requires hacks to keep working, uh, which is really important for open web, for breaking down platform barriers, for not having lock-in anywhere. And so your designs effectively become an API, right? So in uh, the case on our homepage, you have this video. Well, this is a video hyphen player tag. Um, it's a ton of accessibility <laughs> work poured into it. And that is a really highly designed, uh, if you scroll past it, it'll stick to the top of the window. It's got all kinds of features, but you integrate it into the browser via a single tag reference and then a single you know, video hyphen player. And then what Hacks does is if that tag is on the interface and if Hacks in its app store has said, oh, I know how to edit those, or, or I'm allowed to edit those, I should say, um, the video player bubbles up an event that has that little bit of hack schema in it indicating how to build it. That hack schema is an abstraction on JSON schema, which is a standard for expressing how to manipulate a data structure. And then there's a web component that is able to render JSON schema. So this entire form over here has been constructed by the video player sending an event to Hacks, and then Hacks builds the form dynamically. Uh, this is an incredibly powerful abstraction uh, that allows us to unify the you know, editing mode associated with this, right? We have this two-pane approach, much for this reason as well, um, so that the way to edit anything and get into detail is the same for our end users. But us as developers, we didn't write complex forms. The forms are, are generated automatically. So no matter what we design, we can build that form. And so these are just some of the things that we've made. We've um, In a more education-centric audience, I'd say it highlight the uh, code sample, uh, the math, which does uh, math ja or math ML, math JAX integration automatically as a single tag that just says LRN. Uh, Math, hyphen math, and then whatever the math is in there. Um, citations are important. Uh, task lists, multiple choice quizzes, uh, self checks, licensing, and of course, funny memes or vocabulary terms or uh, data tables. So we'll take a CSV file upload and convert that into a 100% accessible HTML table. Um, or referencing Wikipedia because you know all of our students think that that's just where all the information comes from anyway. So these are just some starting points as far as the things we provide. We can take any asset and wire it up to hacks uh, in a matter of minutes, really. So we design first, and then authoring and editing is more or less assumed. So in this case, this is a, a full width image uh, that just has a simple little text area over top of it. Um, every website and every blog has this. Well, now every website and every blog ever produced can use this. And I didn't have to think about how to build this form or what the authoring experience associated with that is. I just create the design asset. I lay it out the way I want, test it for mobile responsiveness, and then put in the uh, JSON blob that allows hacks to understand how to talk to it. So moving beyond Hacks then, uh, what is Hacks CMS? Because this talk was supposedly about Hacks CMS. <laughs> uh, so Hacks CMS, um, I, I fundamentally believe that if we had a really rich text uh, WYSIWYG editor, if we didn't have just you know, a generic 
uh, body area back you know, 15 years ago when, when Drupal and WordPress and Joomla and all these things were kind of in their infancy, um, we would have radically different solutions crafted. Like if that editor was good, <laughs> if that default body blob area was actually good to start with, we wouldn't have all this crazy stuff plugged into it all over the place via plug-in architecture uh, in PHP or, or whatever, you know, whatever the back end is, just to try and prop this thing up so that it maybe has two images that are side by side and then text below it. So um, using that as a model to, to build off of, I think we could build a radically simplified content management system if our editor is assumed to be awesome uh, and hyper flexible. Well, Hacks is hyper flexible. Um, so, uh, this is a web component driven CMS uh, at every level. It has very limited back end to it because uh, it doesn't really need to do a lot on the back end other than save files uh, and recall files, more or less. Um, it's a static site generator that's basically generating everything as you go. So when you edit a page and you hit save, uh, Hacks is actually just updating a HTML file on the back end. Uh, so it's already static. Um, we've created a standard called JSON outline schema because the world needs more things with the word schema and JSON in them. Um, but it's effectively a simple way of illustrating the relationships and hierarchies between material and just saying, hey, this is all on a site. So that boils up to a single JSON file. And so we're able to deliver you an entire site experience more or less through a single site.json file and static HTML pages. And so the intention of Hack CMS is that you're managing a whole ton of microsites and then you're publishing them somewhere. So the technical details of Hack CMS is the backend is PHP at the moment. Uh, it really could be anything. There's, it's a highly decoupled solution. And there's only about eight endpoints. I haven't counted them all <laughs> at the moment. That part's still a little bit in flux. But um, there's only about eight endpoints that are really needed. You need a backend that can save a file, uh, a backend that can update a file, a backend that can put stuff in version control because all sites are automatically put into Git um, as you're creating them. Um, so on the front end, we've got a mix of uh, Polymer 3, Lit Element, and Vanilla JS web components, um, which is, as an important note, one of the incredibly transformative aspects of web components is that this is even a thing. So I can mix all three of these together and not have to worry about you know, any data, uh, data capabilities being out of sync. Um, you could theoretically wire up a view element or anything that's on the custom elements everywhere.org website. Um, I haven't tried any of those other ones, but Hacks, uh, the Hacks wiring library that has all the definitions for the for its schema um, is an ES module. So anything that supports ES modules should be able to, but I haven't, haven't uh, tried that thus far. So what's going on with Hacks CMS, I'll show a video in a minute showing this actually work, is that you've got um, effectively these two sides of the equation. We'll start at the, at the back. So, um, if I'm running Hack CMS locally, what that is is a series of web components, kind of like Lego bricks here, um, that are sitting on front end assets. And in those front end assets, I've got things like a router, uh, you know, that can just make sure that I, it knows where I am and what I'm editing, things like that. Um, then a JWAT or a JSON web token is generated, and that just makes sure that I'm me, and it passes that data back to PHP in the case of operations like saving a page, saving the outline, saving a file, loading content, loading the outline, loading the file, whatever that is. And then it just writes those statically, uh, making sure to update more or less these three locations of data, which is site.json, pages directory, and the files directory. So then what that ends up being on the front end is so in Hack CMS, I've done all these changes, I'm, I'm editing files, and then I hit the publish button. That then takes those static files, which have been set in JSON, or sorry, been set in Git uh, version control the whole time, 
And it basically just publishes those up to you know, GitHub pages at the moment, but it could be anywhere um, as static assets. So that then when you go to like the hackstheweb.org website, you're getting the web components references to those components. And then some of the routing is still happening, but it's hitting static files. You've, you've effectively cut out um, this layer in the middle here. That's no longer part of the equation. Uh, so this can run off of you know, GitHub pages, as I mentioned, or, or anything really. It's, it's just a static web server for serving uh, the assets in the end. So how do I get it? And I'll show what it is. <laughs> it's uh, elmza, github.com slash elmza lens slash hack CMS. Um, the fastest way to get going with it is do a git clone and then ddev start. Um, we don't require that you use ddev. I just really like using ddev for, for local uh, development. It's just a, a really nice Docker uh, container packaging. We have support for other platforms there as well. It's just most of my demos are going to be done showing that. So um, let's actually show what is Hack CMS. And uh, I'm going to post that in here.
which we'll do in a minute. So stop sharing that, go back on Rails here. <clears throat> so the theme layer um, is, is a pretty powerful aspect of hack CMS um, and making your design, your content look you know, radically different, right? We don't want this to just look like one little tiny simple site. Um, so there's a couple links, I, I tweeted them out, I can post them in the, in the chat as well to these different, uh, different web addresses. Um, but so there's one I made for this webinar uh, that's you leveraging that learn to theme. And so see, it's a basic theme, it's got mobile responsiveness. But the real power in it is its repurposability. So because we're building our web components, all aspects of the front end are effectively able to be reused um, across different, different designs. So you know, it, a breadcrumb trail is a breadcrumb trail. A, a, a H1 header, the thing that's supposed to accessibly be the point of this entire document and the active title, that's always the same. A lot of things have side menus. A lot of things have pagination um, back and forth. A lot of things have you know a little RSS feed button. So we can um, have those designed assets, right? And these are these are components that we can leverage over and over again. The unique aspect of what's going on in that theme, and uh, I'm gonna make up my a new hashtag here. Hopefully, it's not already taken by something else. Of so damn semantic is this. So this is the HTML that you would see if you were producing this uh, learn to theme and hack CMS. So where the title was, for example, this is the site title. If you want to put site title there, here's site title. And then using CSS variables, you can style that how you need to. So we've taken this kind of mix of um, functional state management driven components and we've abstracted the state away completely <laughs> and, and bubbled it into these tags. So if you want the correct links to RSS feeds, there you go. But leveraging the web component standard, we can kind of make up our own properties, do whatever we want. Um, as, as a pretty radical uh, example, that entire side menu that we see here, go back for a second, this one that I outlined, that has a whole hierarchy and you can click and step down, you can see it on hacksaweb.org as well, is a single tag. All state is involved in there. Uh, styling that then becomes just writing a bunch of CSS. We actually have, um, I believe, 199 lines of CSS in this theme, heavily leveraging CSS variables in order to style that site to look the way it is, but yet it's only about 28 lines of HTML. Yes, Web Components does change the game a little bit because this tag has a shadow root and it's got a ton of material inside of it. Um, but I can do things like generate breadcrumbs dynamically by saying, hey, put the breadcrumbs here. That's game changing for a, a designer. So you could document your project and start to be silly because things come pretty trivially. You can uh, have that material be designed in a completely different way. So this is not leveraging many of those components, although it's still using one or two. Um, and then when I clicked and presented a blog post, right, that went to a completely different way of looking at the material, but yet it was still able to tie into the state management. Um, or you can make an entirely custom theme. So this is a theme being worked on uh, by members of our, of our group that work in um, the Office of Digital Learning in Eberly College of Science. This is a hack CMS driven site. And I assure you, it does not look like some adorable little static site generator. <laughs> so um, mentioned there's static publishing workflows associated with this. So every time that you hit the publish button, as I let off or left off on at the end of that video, you're getting files that live out on GitHub. And so then those files get mirrored over to GitHub pages and we get GitHub based addresses that in this case have a slide player. So let's look at static publishing real briefly and then we'll wrap up from there.
So wrapping up, um, additional features of Hack CMS is it gets pretty high Lighthouse scores, uh, which Lighthouse is a Google page analyzer uh, feature. Um, we're always looking for help in getting those scores higher <laughs> by default, uh, but considering we're currently just publishing to GitHub pages and uh, we're, on, we're not bundling our JavaScript files, we are getting pretty high scores. Um, you can see some of them on, on my tweets or you can run Lighthouse on um, the session resources, uh, which gets pretty decent scores. Um, we're using MobX for state management. So if you don't want to leverage you know, our elements we provided on the site side, or sorry, on the theme side, uh, you can dig in and, and just access our MobX store directly, uh, which some of our more advanced themes do, like the blog one. Um, there's, a, there's a rant I went on the other day about how much state is involved in the footer of the blog post um, uh, theme just to make it show you what is the previous and the next post. Um, to kind of illustrate that your front end designers, they want to design, they don't want to be messing with state management just to get like a backlink correct. Um, so uh, content is not locked into Hack CMS. It's in a flat HTML structure as we showed. And uh, JSON uh, is, is, or sorry, the structure and relationships between those is in a single JSON file. Um, so what you get locked into is the web component standard itself, not any one system, right? I could easily migrate this content uh, to any system as long as I teach that other system how to render web components. And so in this regard, the web platform is the real system that shines here. We're just kind of orchestrating things and stitching them together. So roadmap for the hacks editor, um, we need to fully integrate the ES6 version, the one that you saw uh, today, into Elm's learning network um, that we use in, in production. We're using um, a older prototype version of Hacks. Uh, we've been using that to get feedback for about the last four months. And so we need to upgrade that to the latest and greatest that you get all get to play with today. Um, we need to improve mobile editing experience. It's OK, but when you start to, you know, it, it just needs work. Um, we do have connotations of grid plates and responsive designs. And I didn't show that because it's it's still very much in development. Uh, but we want people to be able to lay material out by just saying, give me a two-column split. Uh, you shouldn't need to be a responsive front-end design engineer in order to present content in a grid. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, we're also adding a table editor that's being worked on right now. Uh, so you could just build, you know, edit table rows and things and do so accessibly on the front end as a input option for hacks, um, hacks capable elements, I should say. Um, some media management improvements like drag and drop, reordering of elements, things like that. Um, and always uh, focusing on accessibility improvements and uh, authoring experience based on user feedback. Roadmap for hacks CMS um, is to create additional site elements. Uh, that contain all the state and make it easy to kind of manipulate that site.json um, file to present different things. You know, maybe you want a list of posts or something. That should be a single tag that just does that for you. Um, importing multiple formats. So we want to be able to ingest rather simple WordPress content, uh, Drupal, like menu and book structures, Gitbook, which we already have some uh, experimental work that's, that's doing it. Uh, and converting it into JSON outline schema and uh, grab CMS. Uh, hope to get to those, you know, in the next month or two. Um, also, multiple publishing endpoints. Right now, it just publishes to GitHub, um, or you can click download and get the files statically. Um, it'd be nice to be able to more flexibly define where that data goes. Um, we are planning on starting to roll out some production courses using Hack CMS at Penn State. Uh, in the fall semester of 2019. So it's definitely something uh, to play with now and, and you know dig into for your own personal uh, personal sites and things. Um, we, we have some real big plans around learning analytics uh, associated with our web components that they emit data, things like that, but still in the planning phase. Um, and hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have a desktop and Node.js backend version of Hack CMS um, because we want to be able to run it anywhere and have the same experience. Have, have you be able to have a Node.js backend server publish a Hack CMS site, take the files and import them into a PHP-based Hack CMS site, and then import them into a Hacks the, the Web desktop app 
and have those all be identical. Um, shouldn't be, shouldn't, it sounds difficult, it really shouldn't be. <laughs> um, and continue to add more themes, theme elements, and documentation, documentation, documentation. Uh, we also have plans to work on um, a Drupal-esque field system um, that should be pretty easy given the work we've already done with Hacks uh, Editor and the, and the JSON schema work. Um, so thank you for, for tuning in. Um, if this is you know already recorded, thanks for watching. Um, uh, ex uno pluris, one to many, and my silly meme that I do of myself um, where I'm Iron Man, but you can see in the clouds there's an X, so obviously uh, I've got hacks on my mind. Um, so with that, um, here's the ways to get involved or to check out you know, different aspects of the project, um, see sites that are using Hack CMS, and here's another silly picture of me. Um, does anybody have any questions? You're welcome, Sean. I don't know that the chat shows up for public record, but um, we've got a few minutes, a few minutes left over. Um, if anyone has any questions um, or would like to know how to how to dive in? Um, oh, thanks, Dave. <laughs> it says, "Whoa, blown away." Your introduction, and I think you've given people a lot to think about. But as you said, I've got a few minutes of questions. If anybody has one or more than one, that would be cool. Yeah, so Dave Dave says, how do you dive in, as you phrased it? Um, so um, I guess the first, so let's frame that because we still have some time here. So do you mean diving into web components, into hacks, or into hack CMS? Like how how would you I guess how would you see this being something you could use um, in projects you're doing currently? Hack CMS, okay. Um, so Hack CMS, um, the best way to to dig into that is to just read the the directions page on there. Um, I'm gonna at least I don't know. I was gonna say I, I was gonna go to hacksweb.org. Um, on hacksweb.org, there is a whole documentation section that dives pretty deep on hacks as far as the uh, the hacks element specification. It also starts to get into Hack CMS. Um, I, the the, the uh, theme element component abstraction I finalized just yesterday <laughs> um, in preparation for this for this demo. So um, the theme layer is still uh, still being heavily documented. Part of part of documenting the the theme layer um, is also you know, and making sure it's robust enough as far as the state management is also just creating different themes. Um, so there's a there's a blog theme. There's a theme called Outline Player that runs on hackstheweb.org. There's the Learn To theme, um, which is running um, on the the site that's uh, let me, I can throw it in the chat here um, on this site. Um, it's btlpro.github.io slash aperio hyphen hackcms hyphen webinar, um, and that is a port of a grab CMS theme. Uh, just to try and get some some decent compare and contrast. Um, so the best way to get started really is to um, read the the install directions on the github.com slash elmsln slash hack CMS page. Um, I would recommend using DDEV just because that's what we test in um, the most. And then just break stuff, post issues. Um, we really need we need more people vetting vetting what we're doing, um, challenging our assumptions, um, and, and trying to build this out into a more robust uh, thing. Um, so yeah, is any, any other, oh, there we go. Where should I go to figure out how to wire my own assets into hacks? Uh, it's from Dave Kopakak. Thank you. Um, so if you go to hackstheweb.org under the documentation section, um, there is, there's a whole section there that has a, 
uh, a example hacks element, and it actually points to a link um, uh, in in our um, in our LRN web components setup um, that is just a like hello world element, if it were for hacks. Um, and all it does is it just data binds and prints some values to the screen. So it's not a design element because that's not the point of it. Um, also in the WC factory tooling uh, itself, if you run through, there's a, it provides a CLI for creating elements. And in the questions it asks you, you know, beyond like, hey, what do you want to name your element? Uh, do you want it to use SAS? Um, it asks, or asks a question about, uh, does your element have custom properties? And then if you say yes, then it'll ask, do you want to auto wire your element to hacks? Mic drop. So, <laughs> so then you walk through the CLI and, uh, and you um, build out properties as to what the definition of your element is. Um, you, know, you define, say, hey, this is a string, this is a number, Boolean, whatever, for the or object for the different inputs. And then it will automatically write, and now it doesn't maintain it, but it will automatically write the wiring for that and it will put it in your new element in its own um, name of the element dot uh, hacks properties dot JSON, I believe is what it is, um, which you can then peek through and see what it wrote. And it's a lot easier to, it's one of those things that like you can read the spec for, um, but it's a lot easier to reverse engineer, quite frankly. <laughs> Uh, looking for a solution for volunteer organizations who want to maintain websites with low skills rather than use Facebook. We'll start with Hacks the Web. Thank you, Robin. Um, yeah, that's, um, this is not a policy philosophy discussion, but honestly, that's a lot more where my head's at with these things. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of immoral that if you use Wix.com that your content is locked there. Um, in, my, in my opinion. Um, it's one thing to provide services. I have no problem with vendors providing services for things. And it's another to effectively lock you into using their services for the rest of time. Um, I feel that stifles innovation. Um, yeah, service locks your data. Yes, exactly, Dave. <laughs> so, um, uh, and, and I, I honestly, I always thought that uh, the Squarespace is you know, we'll go back in time to the GoDaddy website tonight software. Like to me, that stuff, okay, I, I built it. It's in a theme that they control, I get it. But literally in the documentation uh, or FAQ for Wix, it says like, no, there's no way to export your data. Um, at least with like Weebly and some of the other services, they have like, click here to get your data in a format for WordPress or, you know, in a, in, um, import WordPress or export to static HTML. Like at least you can get copies of your stuff. Um, but the average user doesn't know how to go through and screen scrape a Wix site to get stuff back out. So um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of labor of love and trying to build a more robust decentralized web community um, that's not tied to platforms. So if you have any any uh, issues you run into, Robin or anyone else, please feel free to hit me up. Um, we're coming up on an hour. Does anybody have any any last minute questions? Otherwise, we should take this to uh, to the Twitterverse or what have you. I think that's a great conversation, Brian. Thanks very much. This will be, this video will be available on the Ontario YouTube channel by the end of Thursday at the latest. So thanks for attending. Thanks for and see you soon. See everybody. Thanks for taking.